I think we should get on into the sort of meat of the next situation, which is the pricing yes. of the Burning Crusade Classic. Because, wow, yeah. Um, I mean, it was obvious they were trying to monetize it a bit more deeply, right, from from BlizzCon. We, we all knew that. We all expected that. I think what we didn't expect was the degree to which they would monetize it. So I think the egregious thing, 35 bucks for a character clone. That is how much money they want from you. And I mean, it's that situation. I, I just want you to picture, even if you're not a classic player, but picture a situation where you have put two years or whatever it is, a year and a half of time into your character. You've rated up to Naxxramas. You've, you've really went in deep in this. And this character means a lot to you. And it's sitting there. It's in classic. It's got its classic community. Vanilla classic, that is. Okay, the Burning Crusade's coming. Now, if you move that character over to the Burning Crusade server, then you lose that character in Classic. And, you know, even when Wrath of the Lich King and Cataclysm were the current expansions, there were private servers for older expansion packs, right? So it's obvious that that is something that people would want, that they actually would like to have their character exist on, on that classic server and then bring it over to, to the Burning Crusade. Um, that's the sort of thing as well. I mean, if all the characters piss off to TBC and then there's nothing left on, on the classic servers, it does make that a bit weird, doesn't it? So they know that. They know that people have got that connection. And they know that for every single character that somebody has got an emotional connection to, there, there, there's a high chance someone's going to pay that 35 bucks. Yeah. I, if, if you have three characters, it's a lot of money. Yeah, I think it was. Asmongold said he has four characters he wants to bring over, and that's $100. Uh, yeah. Ow. And it's like... I mean... It's so annoying. It's so annoying, because there's so much... There's so much free, like... Let's say free will. So much goodwill they could have, they could have garnered, garnered from players by going... First one's free, or clone two for the price of 35, something like that. First one free would eat into like all of their profit, but like a second for free or a third for free or something would just have been that kind of, the, the normal thing of incentivize you, make you feel good about your, about your purchase, but it's just eating you a little bit and it feels that way. Yeah. Which I, mean, I think is the, the uh, <laughs> how much is a server transfer? I have no idea. Because... This is just a server transfer, but instead of cut, it's copy and paste. It's not cut yeah. and paste, it's copy and paste. That's the only difference, right? So you know that it is being primarily priced around the pain point that this problem creates for you. And it's, oh yeah, I think it's just your, your noise gates being quite strong. So now we're sitting with, uh, we've got... <laughs> the, the, the secret yeah. is you, you've got to really talk and you just got to fucking... <laughs> Um, yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah, it's so it is that thing where it is all priced around a pain point that they knew their handling of this situation would create, and for me, that's hitting a situation where they it doesn't feel like they're selling a a good service, like they are selling value to somebody. No, like I'm fine paying for value, but they are paying to solve a problem that. They're just paying to solve a problem that they created. So there's that for the... There's that for that. There's then also the, uh, of course, the character boost, which is priced at $40, which um, it's interesting. Is, is that less than a live character boost? I think it is. I, I think it is a bit less. Yeah, because I think... $60 in America for that, right? I think it is. I know it's like 40... Is it 40 or 45 here yeah. in pounds, which obviously translates up to 60 or so? Yeah, so they've they've made it a bit cheaper, which I mean, okay, fair enough, good. And it's it's only one per account, which is a good thing. They could have definitely went a lot deeper. Uh, they could have went a lot deeper in how they monetized that, but I mean, for a lot of people, that fundamentally is is changing things up. And it's that thing where you know, when people say some changes. I think what they mean is that the Chrono Boon is something that makes their gameplay experience better, and they're happy about that. When they say some changes, well, I don't think they mean that paid character service uh, that existed at the end of Mists of Pandaria get backported 
into the Burning Crusade. That's not what people say when they mean some changes. So that's that's something there. And at least it doesn't work for Blood Elves and Draenei. I guess we have that. Yeah, that's I think like I think that's almost entirely them going, Well, we can't do this. This is literally like this is the straw that will break the camel's back. It will make us a lot of money, but people would be honestly furious about about it, and rightly so. So I think that was literally like a all right, so we've got the Dark Portal Pass, and someone in the back went, no, 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 no blood else, no Draenei. Either that, or this place is going to be lit up, like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big. So, there's that. And then, of course, there's the more egregious thing, which is $69.99 for the Deluxe Edition. And I think that is, uh, you know, that's a fun one, because that's $10 less than purchasing the Shadowlands Deluxe, the Epic Edition. You know, the only difference being that, I guess, that 10 bucks covers what? Shadowlands, the new thing they made? So it does feel really very expensive indeed, right? I mean, you're getting uh, two mounts. One of them has got a, you know, sort of a, one for TBC, one for Shadowlands. Got your two mounts. You've got some TGC toys that they've just resurrected for the store. Yeah, Dark Portal, Dark Portal, and the Elden Path, Path yeah. of Elden, because they they didn't want they wanted to have them available but not have them, so it was like, yeah, we'll we'll just sell them then. Happy days. Yeah, Happy so days. They, they've got that. Uh, Thirty days of game time, and a it's not a character boost; it's a Dark Portal Pass, of course, because we got to play into their branding. And it's sixty nine ninety nine, which is a hell of a lot of money. I mean, that is basically the that's the complete price of a expensive AAA game. Uh, I mean, that's the price of, like, a Returnal or a Spider-Man or a God of War or something, basically. Um, it's hard to really look at that and think that it's a, that it's a great value. Um, there's also another angle to this, though. And this cannot make it live. Because if this makes it live, Blizzard, I'm very disappointed in you. Currently, based on the data mining, the mount that you get that you can use in TBC Classic, right? That mount is 100% move speed, but it's usable at level 40. Some so it's... Like... <laughs> I mean, that's not some changes. <laughs> that is a store mount that is objectively superior to what you could otherwise get at level 40. Now, we're not going to fully jump down their throats of this one yet, because it's just into the data mining. Uh, but the data might apparently people are saying uh, that's been that's been is confirmed. that being changed it's clarified to be 100 percent at level 60 apparently good okay so it's right yeah okay they just clarified it great nice that's okay good, that's good. good. i think there's a i mean there was a bunch of what we sort of thought was maybe info now it turns out it's misinfo so that is definitely good wow would have actually wow wow had have actually had to make a post clarifying that's I wonder if what happened is the way that it showed up in their initial data mining mm. made people think that and then they had to go in and, and issue the correction. So that is actually quite interesting. So that is good. That is good. The other thing though is, I mean, this is paid cosmetics in the Burning Crusade. And paid cosmetics did not come into World of Warcraft until the end of Wrath of the Lich King with the Sparkle Pony. So again, some changes. Now, some of those some changes do actually seem to be good for the player experience. I know they're doing a bunch of stuff on leatherworking drums, and they're making it so that Arena Season 1 is more consistent with the rule set of how it was in 3 and 4, and I think doing a bunch of things there that seem reasonable enough. But it just makes you wonder, is the floodgate opening here? You know, are, are they going to... Are they going to have some sort of in-game shop eventually that will have other... TGC cosmetics that exist in the Burning Crusade style. Yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get your spectral tiger, maybe. Uh, they could no, they couldn't do that. They couldn't do that. There'd be too much of a riot. There'd be too much of a riot. They could. I mean, they've they've they've, they've set the groundwork with they've set the groundwork with those. They're like, oh yeah, this was rare back in the day, but we'll just sell it to you instead. So happy enough. It's like the dark portal was. Oh, I remember my friend bought it when it was like $40 or something. Mm. And that was it on a really, like, that was it on a steep 
steal for some reason down from like 80 90 dollars or so so it's actually really like it, it is an expensive and rare thing that they're just selling because they don't have the same distribution problem and the rarity problem mm. so they'll go oh here's your that's what i expect honestly i honestly yeah. expect here's your tiger here's your whatever other uh e ecg stuff there was i imagine that'll be dripped out throughout if and only if this uh store debacle doesn't utterly wreck if if AR. they do that with the spectral tiger i mean the spectral tiger was a bunch of I mean, a bunch of BS that just led to a whole bunch of people paying like a grand on eBay for, for, for the tiger. So if Blizzard, I mean, if they go and they put a spectral tiger in that costs like 50 quid in the in-game store, then you're like, it's the sort of thing. In order to preserve the rarity, like the whole point of the spectral tigers, there's not that many of them. So if they just put it there as a $25 store mount, I mean, number one, you're selling an ancient, ancient model that looks a bit naff by modern standards for, you know, uh, quite a lot of money. So if they did that, that would be ridiculous. But they'd flood so much supply of Spectral Tigers that a Spectral Tiger would really no longer be a Spectral Tiger. It wouldn't have that coolness to it. So then the only way to do that would be to limit the supply or make it extremely expensive. But if they do that, then that kind of just corrupts what it is. I don't know, man. If, if you, you got that, maybe the X-53 Nether Rocket, like if they put those in an in-game shop, I think that would be absurdly disappointing. Although I guess Blizzard could take this opinion. They could say to themselves that cosmetics effectively did exist in the Burning Crusade via secondary market. And that because those things are no longer in print, you could then justify providing an official solution to give players the opportunity to unlock those rare, uh, you know, those rare cool things of the past that people had such great memories of. And they could sort of try to take it in-house, which is a little bit of applying the Diablo 3 launch auction house uh, theory to things. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say that they're going to do that. I could see how you in a year could look back and could see this as the bit where, you know, we lose traction on our feet and we begin to slide down some sort of slippery slope. I'm not going to call who they're doing it just yet, but I think it's the sort of thing where if people didn't get really pissed off at this, you could totally see them thinking, okay, we can get away with that. Or a situation where if people get pissed off, but at the end of the day, they still get really good numbers, they could go ahead and do that. And also, I mean, the store amount, uh, the... Oh, but whatever the, the dude, the, you, the one you get um, with the Burning Crusade Dulux Edition, yeah, that's the, one that didn't, hunter? yeah, it didn't exist. Yes, in in TBC, which kind of means that they're willing to actually do development of new cosmetics for the Burning Crusade that are usable in the Burning Crusade, and that's basically the thing. I mean, the difference between this and Classic Original Classic launch is the Alabaster Griffin. Well, that was something you got in in the in BFA and Modern WoW. It was not something you got in Classic. So that is a change that they've made. And then you have to wonder, is that directional, that change? Almost certainly. It's weird with the... It's weird with the, the TCG stuff because this is something they actually can't do in Modern WoW. Because my initial thought was that this was going to be directly a case of we will get parity with mm -hmm. the existing retail store as quick as possible through this uh this launch and then we will also get we'll get around the fact that if we launch burning crusade with no additional things all we're going to get is a, an initial sub price when we could get so much more or you know you would imagine we'd get so much more i was saying about the parity between stores yeah and that's why i'm actually because i didn't think about it before right i didn't think about it i'm terrified of them running with this, what do you call it? This TCG kind of market. I hadn't thought about it at all. Now I'm genuinely terrified. Really, yeah. I really didn't expect it, and it's real. Well, it's like you you could see oh, how yeah. they would attempt to justify it. Yeah. You, you really could see how they'd attempt to justify it. 